Hi, I'm Aaron Magner from the Disco Biscuits, and this is my keyboard land. It's gone through a bunch of different revisions over the years. I'm at a place right now where I'm really comfortable with what I've got going on. I've scaled down a bunch of stuff. There used to be a clav over here. There was a operating Leslie that was over there that just took a crap, but uh, let me show you what's going on. We will start over here. So, my bottom keyboard has always kind of been my main keyboard that I need to go to for, you know, pianos and electric pianos. What I particularly like about the Yamaha series is that I can have access to, you know, synth leads and choirs and comps and all sorts of like real orchestral instruments and um, I do a lot of that stuff. So it's nice to have the general versatility of everything that the montage has to offer. This is the new montage, which is worlds different than uh, the montage of just a few years ago. And it's really enabled me to kind of like look at this keyboard as a layering keyboard. We're an improvisational band. So, you know, I might have, as whatever random example, I might have a synth brass sound up that I'm playing and then I want to slowly bring in a synth lead sound. So now I have, you know, the lead and the brass and I can blend between the two as I morph my physical line from more of a stabby brass in this example to a lead. So there's this fluidity and then if I'm in a lead and I want to add a choir, you know, so that I can then get there some pads, now I have that ability as well. Um, so I'm always sculpting on this and though I have an amazing keyboard world, I just got to the point, don't tell my bandmates, where I feel like I can actually do a show almost entirely on this keyboard, on this one keyboard. So that's kind of new for me and I like the fluidity of it. So I was coming from a, a Mo DX, um, which was the bottom tier of the previous montage line. Um, clearly a more professional model, just from the weights of the keys to the building of the chassis, but the um, chips are so much significantly faster in here that even things, the response time from the screen, I'm really able to, you know, move between patches, which I have a tendency to do, um, much faster with a lot of fluidity. It also has um, a new integration into software. So now I'm able to not just back up um, you know, this keyboard to software or work on something at home in software and send it back to the keyboard. But now, you know, we practice downstairs before a show and if there's a patch that I want to figure out, I can do that downstairs, figure out what I need to dial in, mimic it here or even bring the computer up and send it to here. Um, so there's a lot of just flexibility with this thing and I've had it for four months now and I'm still in love with it. Above the montage we have the Hammond XK5, uh, which I think is their most recent of the clone wheels. Um, it was going through a Leslie, it was a solid state amp in the Leslie, but it was all um, enclosed and so the microphones were inside of the case, which was really nice. Um, the solid state amp took a shit, so instead we are using a mini ventilator, which makes some people happy that uh, we took away three open microphones for just a pair of stereos. The organ in this context of this band is most frequently used to kind of, you know, we're a, gu a guitar driven band, so when we get to that peak and that climax and he needs you know a little bit more wind beneath the sails i'm able to really just kind of like plow in and give that layer where i'm pushing him up um and you know it screams so if i need to take a quick you know <laughs> solo or something at the top to also give the jam energy i'm able to always have a go-to as opposed to shit i need to lead real quickly or let me go over here and it's just right there um, I do actually, you know, because again, we're an electronic band, I do use the effects on these. I'll, you know, crank the reverb up while putting on, you know, a percussion and kind of playing around with that ambient timbre um, coming from an organ. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but for the most part, it's an organ. I don't really do presets. I just play with my draw bars. Um, above the Hammond is kind of the staple of my rig in the modern day Disco Biscuits. And this is an Axis Virus TI. Um, keyboard's gotta be a couple of decades old at this point. 
and I'm still amazed, number one, how much more I'm learning about this keyboard, but just how well it actually holds up through all of the shifts in technology. Um, you know, compared to all these amazing new synths that are out, it really is my go-to um, and for a reason. But what I particularly like about it in the year 2024 is that I just discovered multi-mode. So multi-mode, I can store um, 16 patches per mode, right? So, I mean, however many, you know, modes you have. And each of the 16 patches are assigned to 16 different channels that are then mapped over here. So, you know, kind of one through 16 of the virus. Now, everything is routed in and out MIDI, all right, and assigned to the different MIDI channels. So this is my ARP bank, and I could be playing an ARP on channel one, and I could loop it in, I loop it in MIDI, and it spits it back out MIDI. So the audio path is all going to the same place. The volumes don't change. I'm not sampling it and sending it out another channel. It's just MIDI. It does uh, quantize it in here as record quantization if needed. Um, and then I have it, something on channel one, and then I go to channel two, and I go to channel two and then I can loop on channel two and I could build out as much or as little as I like within those 16 channels of my specific bank. Um, and then with a little bit of trickery from an Ableton guru by the name of Jules, um, he put this crazy script, I don't know where it is, this some crazy script here so that I can map you know, my volumes to each of the individual MIDI channels using a user bank in the APC. Um, you know, so that there will correspond to the same thing as like patch volume over here. Um, and that has just been a game changer for me. So now basically I have 16 virus synthesizers available to me at any given time. Um, there's also some amazing third-party software. Um, you know, th this company kind of shifted their focus into the Kempler guitars um, or guitar sims. So they kind of stopped all of their progress. Uh, <laughs> for, I mean, it's been years now. Um, you know, there's no more updates. There's no more firmware updates. Uh, you know, the software no longer works with any of the new operating systems. So they're there has been a couple of third-party companies that have opened up that actually um, will be able to build out the virus and make it look like it. The user interface is great, and then you could actually do SysX dumps really easily. So, you know, I'm able to find some patches online or manipulate my own patches and put them where they should be within the file structure, which I'm still getting better at. But that's been a game changer for me going into uh, multi-mode as opposed to the single mode, which is just once and done. You know, I could be playing a soft lead. If I want to loop a soft lead over here, it sends it back out, and now I can't do anything more on the virus, and I have to switch over to another keyboard, which would bring us to the Prophet. Um, you know, pretty straightforward. It's just great to have something where I can sculpt immediately, um, which is kind of how I tend to operate in my flow state in this uh, improvisational band. You know, I kind of know where my patches are a little bit, and I used to have a menu of numbers and what they correspond to, but I'll start off, boom, this is what it sounds like, and then I'll just begin sculpting immediately, you know, in the ADSR section or filters so that it's fitting both within the context of the jam and what everybody else is doing and where I eventually need to go switching over to another keyboard. Um, same thing, this is routed in MIDI into here, uh, just on a different channel. You know, the profit channel and then I can loop in any sort of MIDI notes and spit it back out MIDI and again what I really like about that in this improvisational setting that we're in I'll play a line that fits with what everybody's doing and then I have the ability to very minutely adjust it so you know a filter sweep coming up as you know there's a 16th note line kind of being played by the computer um, you know, but it still feels like me, right? Because I played it in moments before. So just because the computer is spitting it back out, I feel like I have ownership of those lines as opposed to, you know, using some MIDI packs or something like that. Um, and, you know, it's 
it would be too much trial and error to just throw in like a, you know, well, this MIDI pack is in G minor, right? You know, anyway, um, underneath the profit, we have the Roland JP8000. This is the keyboard that, um, of any of the keyboards, number one, it's the only keyboard that has made it uh, through every iteration of my setups. Not this physical one. Um, there's always battery problems. Every 10 years, you need to change the battery, which you can do. Easy YouTube tutorials online if anybody has a JP8000 whose battery just crapped out. Um, back up your patches first. And, um, yeah, it really changed the trajectory of uh, what this band became in 1997 when it first came into the rig. Um, you know, prior to that, in keyboard world, it was just an organ and a piano, um, and then a synth was introduced. And it was also in like the you know mid to late 90s when electronic music was like just starting to go from like underground into the mainstream culture. And you know, this was kind of my response to um, to hearing that, you know, and then implementing what I had heard and art reflecting life or life reflecting art, and and uh, yeah, it definitely changed the concept of how we approached our improvisations, and we became a more electronic band with electronic sounds coming in. Um, underneath the Roland JP8000, we have a Roland uh, V station. Um, yeah, you know, this guy, I'm not even sure why it's still in my rig. Oh, it has a vocoder, which I really like. The vocoder I use a lot. Um, and it's got a bunch of great vocoder settings. It's just nice to have just one more keyboard, you know, just one more keyboard so that when you are occupied with your other keyboards and you're like, fuck man, I need a different lead sound. You could just bring up a lead sound because you have that extra keyboard. So it doesn't matter whether it's a V station or a chord, whatever, you know, it's just nice to have just that extra little guy. It's, a, it's an afterthought. If this keyboard went away from my setup, I think that I would be fine. I would find myself in situations where I wouldn't have a vocoder needed when uh, we do those songs. but. For the most part, this is, uh, you know, auxiliary to the rest of the powerhouses. So just a uh, Strymon delay that I have on the Prophet, just because it's easier for me to manipulate these um, as opposed to doing it on board up here, which I can also and sometimes do. Um, it's nice that my tech puts these lights all over everything uh, because I do need to see these knobs. And this uh, tape echo, whatever, is actually on here and again i do like being able to play with the feedback of those to get some cool tones so it's nice having a couple of outboard stuff um on keyboards especially in delay land this guy here and this guy here um are pill pedals they are side chain pedals and the side chain input is this coming from me no it's coming from a drummer so my computer um is mapped to his computer so he's sending me sync and when he's sending sync uh, i'm able to get that from him so that would effectively be a kick drum but what we were finding was that the kick drum was actually picking up too much outside frequency so we wanted to just put something uh, straight into it so that input is just coming from the click and it's ducking um, the keyboard which this one is hooked up to the montage so it will duck the montage. Uh, prior to that in the chain um, is a Nemesis delay pedal. Um, I was previously using a DD7, wanted a different pedal to play with. Kind of nice that it has these different settings. Um, up here, again, pill pedal. This is a side chain compression for my virus. Um, over here, we have the APC controller for Ableton. Um, there is relatively little playback in the Disco Biscuits. There's some tracks that have some like backing effects um, that will be triggered in here. Um, for the most part, they do trigger some like samples that I extract and it's a new thing in the Biscuits where I'm using AI to extract vocals from famous songs and then dropping these samples in. So I'll chop them up in advance and then trigger them on here and throw some, you know, delay effects on the sends and stuff. Nice to have. Here is a new addition to my setup. It's a stream deck. And this unit is really for 
like podcasters and video podcasters and you know it's like shortcuts in your workflow in your studios um, in your home studios not necessarily music studios I wanted to hard map this to certain samples uh, like rise specifically risers and downshifters um, I was spending too much time trying to find my riser, you know, and then putting a downshifter next to it and just too much time searching around over here for it when I should be concentrating on the music. And this enables me to push one button and then it triggers that specific cell um, on Ableton. So it is not a MIDI controller, but we put some scripts on it that enables it to kind of like encode to certain cells. And then I can label it as I go, which is really nice, the customization of it. So I know that this is gonna be my snare riser and a clap riser. And this is the riser that our bass player particularly likes. So I called it Mark. And then these are all my downshifters, um, you know, and then I could label it so I kind of know what it's going to sound like before I trigger it. This is a rhythmic riser, a wind and pitch riser. Um, so that's kind of nice. Here's a, an, another great way that I customized it. This is my overdub. So if I'm playing a line that I want to spit back out um, through that keyboard, I already had recorded something and I want to overdub it, I can press that and then play on top of it. Or I can press that and then manipulate some knobs and then, you know, unencode it. So that's been a, a really uh, efficient new addition to my setup, just having dedicated customizable buttons. Um, Let's go down here. We have a volume pedal for um, the Hammond. We have a secondary um, switch for the delay tap. And then sustain, sustain. Mini ventilator pedal for the organ. This pedal enables me to talk back to our monitor engineer. If I just talk into my microphone here, um, then just my monitor engineer hears it and nobody else. If I push the button and talk into the microphone, then the entire band will hear it. So, you know, I can say like, hey, let's do a drop in the next bar and everybody will hear. Um, or, and that nobody has to hear, hey, can you turn the guitar up? And over here, I have a guitar boost. So if I need a little bit more guitar and don't want to ask for it. And then three sustain pedals. And that, oh, 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 we have this guy. So this is just a sub mixer. Um, if I need a little bit of boost from any of my keyboards, if I want the virus up temporarily just to hear something, I can bring it up. It doesn't affect anybody else and then I can just bring it back down. So everything is routed through here. Same with the click. I don't always want to hear click in my ears. So it's nice just to have a specific fader that I can just bring up when I need to hear it. Um, and that's it. This is, uh, my name is Aaron Magner. We are the Disco Biscuits. We are finishing up our uh, last leg of summer tour right now. We will be on the road uh, most of the fall as well. So come check us out. Uh, check us out on the Instagrams and everything and drop us a line.